And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. David Hill. He did start in silent movies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you gathered from my introduction, um, I've watched David's career and been fascinated by it. Not only for a bloke, as I said, from Newcastle, taking on the world, but leading the world in so many areas. Yeah, we can all go and work for organisations. Hilly, how did you go pitching ideas to Kerry Packer, to Rupert Murdoch, and taking them along for the ride simultaneously with their great business acumen and where they were wanting to go? Um. Well, it really wasn't me. They rang up and said, would you like to have a crack at, at doing this? And, um, uh, and so I said yes. So it was, I, it wasn't, I didn't really pitch. Things just evolve. You know, the, 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 it's been interesting listening this morning to all this talk about the future of sport. And the best thing that ever happened to me was something my dad said. And... Um, I came down here to start working television. I worked at the ABC down at Rippenley, and then I worked at HSV7, where I ran into Ron Casey, who was, had a huge influence on me. And, and I was working as a reporter, specialising a lot um, in, in politics and economics. And I changed the sport. I went to work for the ABC to do a show called Sports Night, and then Kerry asked me to, to produce um, World Series Cricket. And my dad said to me, never forget, and my dad was a, a started work as a coal miner, worked in the, the open half, and he was a semi-pro footballer. He was also a very good boxer and, uh, and, and a good wrestler. And dad said to me, never forget, son, that sport is a cure for boredom. And that was, to me, probably something that, that, that had more effect on the way I produce sport than anything else. Sport is an entertainment, and sport has to change minute by minute. And the reason for that is because your audience changes minute by minute. And something you did two years ago isn't going to work, and something you did yesterday probably isn't going to work because your audience and their appetite has changed. Hilly, let's, let's talk about where we're going now. Um, you know, we've been looking and talking today in the newspapers about putting chips in football so we can find out where the ball's gone over the line, out of bounds. But what you've always been able to do is find that technology and even what we're listening to in data and being able to translate it into simple form on the screen. What are some of the things you're looking at at the moment? And probably to start with, what's your motivation given the fact that in the last 20 odd years, gamers have been trying to get their gaming product to look like sport. But your theory is now sports going to have to start looking like gaming. I had a, uh, I, like, one of the key things I did when I was running Fox Sports was I'd look at the figures. I'd spend an hour a week going through the rating figures. Television and television sports is, is pretty simple to, to get your head around because we're being mapped every minute of every day. So you can see where people tune in, people tune out. But more importantly, not only are you seeing your your audience, you're seeing how old they are. And what I was seeing was that, that the demo that was watching sports, which always was when I came into the business in the 70s, 80s, was 18 through to 48, was getting older and older and older. So much so that in the States, the demo that was that watched sports for decades was around 42, 43. It's now 52. Sports like tennis, it's off the charts. I'll give you a classic example. The Players' Championship in golf, right? 50%, um, 50% of the audience, this is what, six weeks ago, is over 65. 50% of the audience watching golf is over 60. In 20 years, they're dead. 78% was 50 and older. So 20% of the people watching golf is under the age of 50. Um, so if you take that through to every sport, your problem is that, the, the, that it gets back to what Dad said, my father said, sport is a cure for boredom. Now, when he was growing up in the Depression, what did you have? Maybe the radio. Now, man has more means of, man, women, whatever, has more means of, of, uh, uh, of satisfying, of curing their boredom than just watching sport. 
So it, it's like sports will not exist decade after decade unless the sport takes it in hand to the way it's presented to the public. Um, because the, the three main things I worked for on, which was cricket, then the EPL, then, then uh, Rupert Murdoch with the NFL at Fox, was that I realized that I had to make it different, make it look different, present it differently, market it differently, have a different style of commentary, so that people would react. And, and w w what I, I kind of came up with was a psychic reward. And what a psychic reward to me is a television experience where the experience of watching it matches the anticipation of the event. Right, so let's go back to the fact that your audience changes on a day-by-day -day basis and right now. Who would have thought 18 months ago how big TikTok was? Yeah. Right? Everything is changing. And for a sport to think the way it was produced, the way it was covered 50 years ago is going to work now, is like, it's, like, it's like newspapers. Newspapers haven't changed for 60 years and they're going, why aren't people reading them anymore? Well, because life changes. So I was looking for something, like I had a 12 month period, I worked for a company, like I've had a great time since I left Fox, I've, like people ring up and say, do you want to have a crack at this, da da da, and it's great. So I worked for a company called ESL, and they are the biggest company in the world that put on video game kind of contests. And they had production centers in Burbank, London, Paris, uh, Cologne, Germany, Warsaw, Poland, and Manila, and Shanghai. And my job was to work with the kids producing videos that they made of video games, and it all went to a, 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 a streaming service called Twitch, which has had two billion viewers. Mm. And it was the greatest revelation for me because I'm in Germany at, at, at competitions for e-gaming. 22,000 kids, average age 22, 95% male, 5% female screaming like a football, uh, a football fan. Watching what? Two big screens of, of people disemboweling orcs mm. or whatever. Yeah. Right? So I then got on this case to, to try and create something where you could take data and translate it into graphics so that it told the story of the sport better. And remarkably, through a strange set of circumstances, working with a mate of mine, Greg Basser, who was in, and I knew in Hollywood for years, he was the uh, CEO of uh, Village Roadshow. And um, a guy called Andy Marriott in Canberra has come up with this system, which is first in the world. And I've worked with companies in Boston and San Francisco trying to develop this, but Andy came up with this thing, where it, it takes line data and translates it into, I actually should have a, like a, a tape to show, but I don't. Um, and shows it in five frames. There's 50 frames in a second of high definition television. And we're currently, at the moment, we've just signed a deal with uh, CBC's volleyball, and we're setting up a system in Moderna in, in Italy, and we're talking to the, the people that are doing the World Cup um, closing ceremony with this, which, which we're just at the very start of it. Yeah. Um, so and maybe, we've done it with tennis and it works. Well, the tennis one, which we hope to see come into um, action over the next couple of years, just to explain it, um, because it's five frames per second, basically it's, it's 50 frames per second in high definition. David's got the technique now where he can get this, the speedo, if you like, in five frames per second. So um, it's, it's, in called, it's called instantaneous <laughs> rather than instantaneous because it's quicker than instantaneous, basically. Hey, listen, we're going to get the wind-up. We're going to get the wind-up shortly, so that's all right. But uh, I've never, never come the up early in my life. Right? There'll Don't be two <laughs> huge hooks. Boom. That's the other thing Lou said. Thank God. Never argue with a bloke with a microphone. Um, <laughs> but the, um, what Richards. it does is it, it, it you know, gets speedos, so for, for betting, but for, for viewing at home. But when you look at this, it does look more and more like somebody playing a, a, you know, a Nintendo or something like that. So you're really trying to get it almost in young people's language, bringing Correct. it back to sport. I want, it's like with, with a lot of sports, now this is not going to impact football, the, the decline in the future of sports. Football, I, to me, it's, it's because it happens in small increments. Like in NFL, you have seven seconds live. 
on, on watching a, a, a soccer game. It's up and down, so everything happens in, sh in short increments. But it's when something goes on like golf, and, and actually I'm working with uh, Greg Norman um, on Live Golf, which, and Greg's idea for that, I think, is probably the only thing that's going to save golf from oblivion down the track. When you look at the figures from, from the Players' Championship, now there is one person that can save golf, and that's Tiger Woods, and if he plays this weekend in the, in the Masters, it'll yeah. be huge. Can I just add that uh, Drive to Survive, and you know, we're looking up there at uh, Brady and the Patriots and Bob Kraft, as you said there, the hero, going back to the very first thing you said on the intro that we had for you, making heroes of We stars. tell the stories of heroes. Yeah. That's what we do. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what the platform is. It wasn't the data. It's we are like the guys who in the caves would do a little drawing of Ugg killing the Brontosaurus. Yeah. That's what we do, but we do it. Last question. The biggest thing coming in, I look at it and see 5G coming in. I'm looking at stadiums now becoming sets for television as well as being creature comfort areas for, um, for people to come to watch events. We'll hear from Adam Silver, uh, the NBA commissioner, who will go into a deep dive on all that in the next day. For you, what's the thing that you look at and go, wow, uh, if I was back being 30 years of age and going again, I'd be writing this one home for the next 30 years? I think that, that what we've got now, that there's so much we can do with the various platforms and linear television. Like, for me, to, to me, the most important thing of all broadcasting is the announcer, yeah. is the commentator, that, that we are... It's human beings talking to human beings. And, and what I would love to... What, what I tried to do in DirecTV, I set this thing up called Red Zone, and that was very... We, we brought in... Well, that was a, that's another story and will take forever to tell. Um, but it was trying to come up with a different commentary uh, so that you had the normal thing, then you had the super techie thing, then you had a couple of comedians coming in and whatever. Betting is one so, that's going to yeah, come of up. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, that, again, talking about customization to the consumer so that they can go, well, I, I'm sick of listening to this straightforward thing. I want to listen to whatever. Yeah. So that's it, customization to your customers. Correct and promote the stars Correct. and use all the technology at your disposal. Seems pretty you simple, go. doesn't simple it? As that. Do that, ladies and gentlemen, you can win an Emmy. It's as simple as that. <laughs> uh, thank you, David. Uh, David uh, sent me a note the other week. He was over in, I think, in Europe at the time and said he'd, he'd love to come. He was coming down for the Grand Prix, heard about Sports Next, wanted to be involved in it, showed me some of the things he's doing with Intanius. I couldn't believe it. Uh, one that uh, David was heading down, which was so fortuitous for us, but also what he's doing going forward has actually given me a, a rejuvenation as to where we're going. With you know, all we ever hear is media is dying and free to air is dying, etc. I look at this and I look at what 5G is doing and the stadiums that we're speaking about, and even auditoriums like this place. I mean, this is unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. By the way, talking of stadiums, I don't know if you guys saw the incredible tribute that Eddie produced for the great Shane Warne. I saw it the other day. I got emotional. Great job. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. <laughs> David Hill, ladies and gentlemen.